What is up, comic fans? Welcome to the Legion of Comics. I'm Mark, and today we're going to be taking a trip down memory lane, talking about this whole hashtag January thing that I've been doing on Instagram and doing a big finale video here with some recent mail uh, that showed up and really just send it off in a great way. If you want to know what I'm talking about, don't go anywhere. Check this out. <music> Shout out to the channel sponsors, Big Time Collectibles. Be sure to check them out at BigTimeCollectibles.com or on social media. They sponsor the monthly Legion Loot giveaway for the channel members, so definitely consider hitting that join button down below and becoming a channel member. And if you need anything cleaned or pressed, hit up our friend Justin's Comics over on Instagram. He can hook it up for as little as $10 a book. And if you let him know you found him through the channel or hit him with the promo code We Are Legion, he'll take you down that special trip to Discount Central and give you that buy two, get one free special offer that is uh, allotted to all the viewers of the channel. So if you need a direct link to any of the sponsors, they are in the description to all my videos, as well as a link to Pops Attic over on Instagram, where you can become an owner of one of mine or my Pops books that we are selling for get it out of here prices. So let's get into it. I do have these open and out of the box already. We have two packages. So let's talk for a second. What is the hashtag January? I set out on a goal in the beginning of 2021 to be more active on social media in an attempt to use it as more than just an advertising spot for my YouTube channel. And one thing that people tend to do regularly over there is little hashtag challenges, which are a fun way to share books with each other and stuff like that. So I thought it'd be a good idea to take the month of January and just start sharing some of my John Jang covers. And I did it by using hashtag January. So if other people participated, I would be able to see what they were posting as well, which a few people did. And it was really fun. So I decided to do that again this year. And it was even more fun than the previous year since there's so many more books to look at. Also pulling out the old ones from uh, all of his previous work. It was great flipping through them and getting to share them. And one of the coolest things I noticed was instead of posting a book a day or just a couple of books a day, I was having to post numerous books every day almost because he's had so much work, so many awesome covers, which is amazing to see these artists really just coming up in this past year. We also saw where he just started doing Marvel covers and he has taken off like a rocket. It's like they really opened Pandora's box with that one. And we've got some of those to show off today. Like I said, I have two orders to go through. The first one is from a great shop called Eastside Comics. So whenever John does exclusives, a lot of the time there will be what's called shared exclusives. You'll have one shop that is the primary exclusive holder who does all the dealings and sets it up and everything, but then he sends allotted copies to participating retailers so that they can spread them out in an attempt to hit a bigger audience and not have to be uh, financially dedicated in such a big way. It helps people shoulder the burden and bring more coverage to the community. And Eastside Comics is a shop that has done a lot of the G.I. Joe covers that I've posted, tons of them, as well as other covers. So be sure to go back on my IG page and check out some of those recent posts if you want to see some of the amazing stuff he's done. But this one really takes the cake for me. It is a Marvel cover. And also on my IG, you'll see where I posted some posters like this Hulk poster back here. I also have a Miles Morales and Peter Parker Spider-Man print hanging in my son's room. This one I need a print of immediately to do the same thing and add it to the collection because this is the first time he's done Peter Parker Spider-Man on a cover on his own. And it's Amazing Spider-Man number 17, and it's the symbiote suit. That is absolutely wicked. As you can see, it is a trade dress copy. They did not come with a virgin trade dress set or a virgin by itself. It was just a one and done, which was great because as a completionist, I didn't have to like spend as much, but I do see this happen with the indie comics more often where you just get one option of cover. And this was a, a, a great situation. I probably would have preferred to have it as a virgin, but I'm still perfectly fine with that trade dress. And I think it's awesome that it's number 17. That is my favorite number. And this is now probably my favorite Marvel cover that he's done to date. That is just amazing. If you just look at the uh, texture and everything on the suit, he just really knocks out this level of detail, like a lot of people don't really aim to do. Completely digging it. And ironically, uh, number 17 is my favorite DC book that he's done with that Son of Kal-El issue 17. So we got the Certificate of Authenticity with this. It's number 169 out of 800. So that's a pretty low print run that they did for those. Not, not bad at all. Now, next up, I have a stack of books. These all came in a big-time collectibles order, and these are... Uh, two Marvel books, and then an indie book. So let's 
Let's keep it on the Marvel books for a second. This is Venom issue number 15. And this is a Miles Morales with a Venomized Spider-Man on top of him. And it looks to me like this could be an homage to Amazing Spider-Man 315. That cover where you have Venom reaching out and scratching Spider-Man's chest. And this is another wicked one. All the level of detail that you get in those fangs and everything. All the little webs all over this Venom character, this Venomized Spider-Man, all the way down to the details in Miles Morales' mask. It's just next level. And then that one did come in a set, a trade dress virgin set. And it's just a standard one, just the removal of the trade dress on this one. A lot of times you'll see the images change from the trade dress to the virgins with a lot of his work. And we see that with this next one, Deadpool issue number three from the current run. And this is a great cover. He did something on this. I don't know if it has to do with what's happening inside the book as I'm not reading it, but it's a mashup, a fusion character, an amalgam of Deadpool and Wolverine. And I'm digging this one with the mask slightly up and you see Wolverine's uh, facial hair and side beard just sticking out of it. And in proper Rob Liefeld fashion who created Deadpool, you get tons of pockets, pouches, ammo cartridges, all kinds of things. You see that he's strapped to the nines. Absolutely wicked cover here. This is just a really fun one. You see all the laser pointers from whoever's surrounding him, just aiming at him. And now with the uh, Virgin on this one, you can see they did an alteration with his face. He is snarling on this one. And there's always a lot of detail to be seen with these uh, John Jane covers. When you see him do robots or mechanical stuff, weaponry, he always puts a ton of fine detail in it. There's blood on the blades. And if you look down at Deadpool's belt buckle, it's got duct tape over it, making the X-Men symbol. So that's a nice little touch there for the fusion character. Definitely, definitely a great cover and a great addition to the collection. Now, lastly, this is a book that I'm sure everybody's heard of. Like two years ago, I think it was, The Last Ronin, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They decided to tell this story, this what if, this like the Dark Knight Returns of the TMNT universe. And we found out that all the brothers and Splinter were dead except for Michelangelo. And he was this jaded version of his old self and everything. It was a five issue series. And John had exclusive covers for each issue from big time collectibles. And now we have a brand new series out kind of telling a story from the time of his brother's passing to the time of the last Ronin filling in the gaps. The name of the story is the last Ronin, the lost years. And issue number one dropped this past week. And of course, John Jang is back with exclusive covers from Big Time Collectibles. And that is the final book of the video. We have this gorgeous, gorgeous variant right here. He draws the turtles in such a unique way. He gives them like that actual turtle beat, giving them the sense of realness. All the detail is there that you would expect to see. The texture on the shell to the texture on the clothing. You see on the Michelangelo half, he has just his iconic nunchucks. But you see all the iconic weapons of his brother hanging on the last Ronin there. A gorgeous, gorgeous cover. I absolutely love all the TMNT covers that he's done. And I even posted some TMNT today on Instagram for the uh, January day 29. So at the recording of this, it is day 29. I'm going to try to post this video the day after the month to really just cap it all off. But leave me a comment down below. I would love to know what artist it is that really stands out to you. Who is it whose art just really draws you in? Obviously, there's tons of big names out there, but it doesn't have to be a big name. Just whoever it is that you just like to follow, you see it, and it's just like there's just a, it has that X factor for you. Also, let me know which of these covers was your favorite. I got to think I'm going to have to go with that amazing Spider-Man. That is just I don't know what it is. I love that symbiote costume. Now we just need to get him to do Spider-Man 2099. Just fill out the set. Keep them coming. But I appreciate everybody watching. If you made it this far, don't forget to hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and consider joining and becoming a channel member. And until next time, as always, I'm Mark, but we are Legion.